Amen. I know, children of God, you're there and you're listening in. I'd like to give God praise for this wonderful opportunity. That has been a, so, a short session of prayer. And now we are going to get into the Word. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the sermon I want to share today uh, is, uh, uh, is provoked by a certain conversation of many Christians wondering why they are not growing, why are they, they are stuck, why why they are, they are they, 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 they feel they ought to be somewhere and they are not yet there. Uh, uh, this is general as a Christian, but it's also general as a minister. Uh, many, many people started ministries, many people started churches, many people started uh, different things, but they were not growing. But you see, for a record, let me first give a record in the book of Acts chapter 2, uh, uh, verse 40, let me start with verse 41. Uh, and I want to give a record of the church so that we get to understand what we are dealing with. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, the Bible says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. This is powerful. A man preached and he, he, he baptized 3,000 people who were converted. Oh my goodness. If that was a pastor, that church has grown in one day. If, if that's a business, and he, you see, the Bible says 3,000 souls were added. Just imagine, child of God. But, but now let us continue. And the Bible says, those guys that were added, 42 says, they continued steadily in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were and all that believed were and all that believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued for the six days and they continued. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church. Daily such a child should be saved. The Bible says the Lord added to the church. Now, here the Bible says, uh, the Bible says here that God added, uh, so here it is 3,000 souls, and they kept adding. Again, Peter preaches, and the Bible says 5,000 souls came to Christ, and then again, the apostles preach, and the Bible says, and a great multitude. So it was from addition, increase kept on coming, and then it was multiplication, and then it was a great multitude that couldn't even be counted. Now, this lets us know that our goal, this was a church, and it grew. If this church grew, it means you too can grow. We see, when you read the book of Acts, you're amazed at how God works. The book of Acts has stories of men that were timid, that were scared of the Jews, that feared they would be killed, who turned into something else. The Bible says they did miracles, they, 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 they shook. One time the Bible says that they, came, they went somewhere, I think in Ephesus, and the Bible says the guys reported and said the men that turned the world upside down have also come here. You see, they, they, they became a world phenomenon after having been normal men and women. This means it's possible for anybody to turn into something great in the kingdom of God. Peter, uh, from denying Jesus Christ, from doubting that Jesus rose from the dead, from uh, reconsidering fishing instead of the mandate God had given him to an apostle of Jesus Christ that works in miracles, signs, and wonders, that defends the name of Jesus Christ before the Sanhedrin, and so on and so forth. We see that there was a transition. We see that there were no moment, they were not born with this thing, they were not born uh, uh, with the manifestation of the power of God, but they grew into this thing. And by the grace of God, God has showed us the patterns. In the scriptures, there are principles, there are patterns that help us understand that spiritual growth can be can be or attained. It's possible to grow. It's possible to increase. It's possible to multiply. It's possible to you see the anointing of God increase on you. It's possible to see the power of God increase on your life. It's possible to see, to tell that the last year I was here, but this year I'm here. It's very, very possible. But now, I want to give you a picture 
of, of, uh, of things so that we get it very clear. I want you to picture a child. When you get born again, you become a baby. That's what the Bible says as newborn babes. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2, the Bible says as newborn babes desire a sincere milk of the word. In other words, when you get born again, you are a baby. But now I want you to look at that baby as a baby, a physical baby. So you're spiritually a baby when you've just gotten born again. And when you go back to the physical world, when a woman gives back to a baby, first of all, let us not lose this. That baby is a hundred percent human. That's number one. Secondly, if they are boys, they are a hundred percent a man. If they are women, they are a hundred percent woman. That should be noted. So it is with the things of the spirit. When you become born again, when you become born of God, you a hundred percent carry the nature of God. You are a hundred percent a pair of God. You you're a hundred percent. Everything about you. The Bible says, if any man being cursed is a new creature, all things are first time, behold, all things are becoming. And it is, all things are of God. Now, this baby who is born by a woman is 100% human. They are 100% a girl or boy. If they are a girl, they are 100% a woman. If they are a boy, they are 100% a man. But they have to grow in humanhood and they are. Uh, circumstances, their situations, their, their prerequisites of their growth. But I, I will pick it up quickly. But at least uh, there are three things that are needed. They have to eat the right food, they have to exercise, and they have to stay among the right people. If they eat the right food, it will nourish their bodies. If they exercise, it will strengthen their bodies. If they stay among the right people, it will give them an opportunity to imitate because it will always help them tell what they can be. So, by observation, they can imitate and develop their abilities because they have seen somebody like them who is doing something they can't do. But because they are like them, they now get the understanding that they can to do it. So they eat the right food, they stay, they do exercise, and they stay among the right people. If a child was born and was fed well and was kept uh, somewhere where they couldn't exercise their bodies, where they can't crawl, where they can't walk, uh, uh, and that child is kept in a cage where they can't do anything, where they're, they're tired and they can't do anything, their bodies will become lazy, they will become weak, and at the age of 10, 20, they can't walk because they were not given an opportunity to do exercise. And if a child <coughs> was born and they are fed well and they do exercise, but they stay among monkeys, they may never get an opportunity to do things humans do because they have never seen a human being. If they were born and they are abducted and they are taken to the forest and they, they stay among baboons, they will do, they will live, they will act like baboons because that was their place of imitation. That's all they observed and that's all they could imitate. So it means it's very, very important for us to understand that we need to eat, right? We need to exercise, and we need to keep the right company. These three things, as in the physical world, they necessitate growth, they facilitate growth, so it is with the spiritual world. And I want to pick it up from there and start sharing the word of God. I hope uh, I'm understood very well. So we shall pick it from the book of uh, from the book of Peter chapter two verse two, where the Bible in First Peter chapter two verse two, the Bible says, "As newborn babes." Desire the sincere milk of the word. Desire the sincere milk of the word. It is very, very important for you, child of God, to know that not everything is for your growth. There are many people who think everything is for their growth. Not everything is for your growth. The Bible says, desire the sincere milk of the word. The sincere milk of the word. There is what we call the sincere milk of the word. Milk that is the sincere milk of the word. Milk that is that is 
that is pure, that, that, that uh, firstly it, it, it kills, it, it stabilizes you, it starts medicine, it energizes your body, it nourishes your body. You see, desire that since the of the word. The word of God is there to nourish you, it's for your nourishment. But you see, when the, when the Bible says that desire is the sincerity of the word, they are trying to let us also know that we have to be careful what we receive. When Jesus says in Mark chapter 4 verse 24 that be careful what you hear, this means that it's very, very important for you to understand that not everything is for your hearing. Not everything is for your reception. I, I, today I was sharing with a great brother of mine, and I told him that Jesus Christ looked at the Jews, these Jews knew the Torah, so they knew the word of God. He looked at them, the Jews, who know the word of God, who know the Torah. And he told them, if you continue in my words, you shall be my disciples. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It means that it's possible to know the Bible and not know the truth. It's possible. That's what it means. Jesus was with these guys and he told them, they knew the Bible, they knew that the books were given unto them, they read the books, they read them in their families, they were with them, but the Bible says, Jesus looked at those Jews who knew the Torah and told them, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free, will set you free. So, child of God, you must understand that the word of God is good. But you see, it's possible for somebody to be lost in the Bible and never know the truth. The Bible says in, in John 1, 17 that grace and truth, the law was given by Moses, that grace and truth came by the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. We must understand that there is a message for your growth. There is a message for your increase. Not every word can increase your life. Not every, the Bible says it's expedient that the heart be established with grace. It's expedient. There is a message for your growth. There is a message that can add to you. There is a message that can increase you. There is a message that can change your life. And when you find that message, you become devoted to that message. For example, when you read the Amplified Version of the bar of the of the of the of the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, when you go to the Amplified, the Amplified highlights something very, very important. The Amplified says, <coughs> uh, I'm trying to open there, uh, look at what the Amplified says. The Amplified says, so faith comes by hearing what is told, and what is told comes by the preaching of the message that came from the lips of Christ, the Messiah. So you see, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So you see, ah, faith comes by hearing what is told. And what is told comes by the preaching of the message that came from the lips of Christ, the Messiah himself. In other words, the message of Christ, when you're reading the Bible, when you're listening to the word of God, be very careful to interpret every scripture in light with God's purpose to bless mankind through Jesus Christ. If you read a scripture, if you listen to a message that is contrary to the mind of God, to the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ toward mankind, that message is not for your growth. That message won't increase you. That message won't multiply you. That message won't lift you. That you will be stuck. You must understand that not everything that is preached from the scriptures is for your growth. Generational curses are not for your growth. Even though somebody can preach and you feel like you identify with them, they are not for your growth. There are things that are not for your growth. The law is not for your growth. The Bible, let me give you an example. The Bible says the law is not of faith. But you see, the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. That's number one. Number two, the Bible, you remember when, when the Bible is listing in Ephesians, when the Bible is listing, uh, I put on the whole armor of God, uh, so he, he starts to list the desperate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, and then at last he says, and above all, the shield of faith. You know what? The shield of faith is above all the whole armor. 
This is how important faith is. So without it, it's impossible to please God. And above all, it's required of you to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. But you see, the Bible says the law is not of faith. Now, how are you going to quench the fiery darts of the enemy if you embrace what kills faith? If you embrace what the Bible says, if they that are of the law be heirs, the Bible says faith is made void and the promise of no effect. In other words, the law, if they that are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. The law voids faith. And the law makes the promise, the Holy Spirit, of no effect in your life. So the Holy Spirit wants to touch you. The Holy Spirit wants to, wants to change you. But you see, the Bible says, if they that are of the law be heirs, Faith is made void. The law voids faith. But you see, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But the law voids faith. The law makes the promise the Holy Spirit of no effect. Why would you listen to the law? Why would you receive the law? Why would you make the law your message if you're interested in growth? You see, child of God, we need to come to that place of deciding that they may not like it, but I am not of this kind of message. They may judge me, they may criticize me, but I'm not of this message. It may have been there for so long, but it doesn't work for me. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And I would rather embrace what came by Jesus Christ. Because by the scriptures, it is what builds faith in me. This is why the Bible says that let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. The word of Christ is the message. In the, in the word of God that concerns the mind of God in blessing you through Jesus Christ. The message of your redemption, the message of your increase, the message of your blessing. That's the word of Christ. And the Bible says, let that one dwell in you richly. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Let that one dwell in you richly. Let that one dwell in you richly. Focus on that kind of message. Paul one time told the Romans in Romans chapter 16, verse 19, that your obedience, your, your obedience has come unto me. And, and, and let, let me open there. He says that your obedience has come unto me. For, uh -huh, while your loyalty, let me look for the KJV, sorry. Uh -huh. He says, uh -huh. Romans chapter uh, It says in 19, for your obedience has come abroad unto all men, and I'm glad therefore on your behalf. But yet I would rather have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. That's very, very important. Uh, let me read the application. While your loyalty and obedience is known to God, so that I rejoice over you, I would have you well vast and wise as to what as to what is good and innocent and guided as to what is evil. You see? That's also part of what you feed. Don't feed your spirit with what is good bad. Many people don't know any name of an angel. Maybe they know two names of angels. Maybe they know three. But they know a million names of devil. They know a million. He says, I want you to be wise. Child of God, if you're going to grow, you have to be wise unto that which is good. And simple concerning evil, you have to be wise to that which is good. You have to be wise to that which is good. And what is good? The will of God for your life. The, 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 the blessing of God. The, the power of God. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be wise. Take time to know that. that, that, that. You know, there, there are Christians who are so given to knowing what is terrible, to knowing what is bad, uh, to knowing uh, uh, how the devil is advancing and how the attacks of the enemy are advancing and, and, uh, and how and how and even in their prayer time they focus on that, they give time to that, they, they melt emotions over that. Hey, the devil is doing this. Paul says, I want you to be wise unto that which is good. Child of God, make up your mind to receive good, to know only good, to yield to only good, to pay attention to only good, to fill your mind with only good, to fill your thoughts with only good. Paul wants you wise 
and to that which is good and sin for concerning evil. If possible, don't even read the news if it corrupts you. Don't read it. But many children of God are, are confused. They approach God with the wrong message, with the wrong meditation, with the wrong thoughts, and they want to grow. Paul wants you simple concerning that which is evil and why concerning that which is good. So, child of God, make up your mind. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 21, it says, Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to renew, which is able to change your soul, which is able to convert your soul. Receive with meekness, receive with meekness the engrafted word. Receive with meekness. This is also part of God. Receive with meekness. Wherefore you say, wherefore lay aside all filthiness, lay out all filthiness and superficiality, or naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. He says, receive with meekness the engrafted word. In other words, receive with meekness the word that is inside you, the word that connects to what is inside you. What is inside you? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, hallelujah. Receive meekness, the engrafted one. Don't receive any word. Receive that thing that is inside you. When a message comes, does it resonate with what is inside you? When you hear a preaching, does it connect, does it call for that thing that is crying inside you? Or you just yield to whatever you, you, you want? Many children of God have not even made a deliberate decision. They listen to things that, that fight what is inside them, that fight what God is doing in their lives, that fight the, 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 the emotions and the provocations of the spirit inside them. They fight the convictions of the spirit and they still continue listening to the same things because they are from the Bible. Not everything in the Bible is written for your growth, child of God. The Bible is an account of different activities, of different people, of different events. You must, by wisdom, by the wisdom of God, by the Holy Spirit, understand what is yours. So here he says, don't receive every word, but receive that which is engrafted. He says, that is what is able to save your soul. The, the, here, when we are talking about the word engrafted, we are talking about that thing inside you. So, as a man is preaching, he's talking about you. As a man is preaching, he's speaking to that thing inside you. He's, he, you, you feel him calling deep, calling unto deep. You feel something inside you being pulled out by the message. That's the message you should listen to. Hallelujah, child of God. Uh, 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 I also love this verse. It's in Amon 1, 6, the Bible says that the communication of your faith becoming effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you, that is in Christ Jesus. This one also speaks of the same thing. He says, what you talk about in your faith will only work if you acknowledge every good thing that is in you, that is in Christ Jesus. Your job is to acknowledge every good thing that is in you, that is in Christ Jesus. He says, that's how what you talk about in your faith will work. That's how the communication of your faith will become a section. Many children of God, when they start to pray, they start to complain, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired of poverty. I'm so stuck, Lord. I'm so stuck. I'm so stuck, Lord. I'm so stuck. I'm tired of this life. Lord, when am I going to stop suffering? Well, you're not doing anything. You're not doing anything. God is also responding to you and he's saying, there is something I put inside you that is good. And if you acknowledge it, your faith would work. Your faith would be operating. So you see, child of God, you must now go to the in Christ truth. You must now go to the things that God has given you in Christ. He has given you righteousness. How do I know that? The Bible says he was made sin with that meaning sin that he may be made the righteousness of God in him, you see? So because of that, oh, I celebrate I'm the righteousness of God. Child of God, if I say that, every devil would know what to do. 
If I acknowledged the righteousness of God I have in Christ Jesus, if I acknowledged the glory unto which I'm called, the Bible says that he brought many sons unto glory, and I'm one of the sons that was brought to glory. If I acknowledge the glory unto which I was brought, if I acknowledge the power, the exceeding greatness of the power that is at work in me, if those are the things I acknowledge, there is no way I can be the same. There is no way I can be on the same level that I was yesterday. I'll have to increase. I'll have to grow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So learn to acknowledge every good thing that is in you. The anointing is in you. The power of God is in you. His glory is in you. The beauty of the Lord is upon your countenance. His life is inside you. The Bible says you are a partaker of the divine nature. You have exceeding great promises. All these things are yours. And they are inside you. As you acknowledge them, as you start to say, I know they belong to me. I know they are inside me. If you only walk up every day and say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, child of God, that would throw you miles ahead of many people. It would throw you miles ahead of many people. Many people just complain, God, what am I going to do? Uh, why don't you care? Uh, so we start to pray like David. Uh, how long will you neglect me, O Lord? How long will you neglect me, O Lord? It may seem like he's not hearing. But you see, we know he's hearing. How do I know that? The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ear has to return to their prayers. So it's not possible that I can think like David that I'm ignored by God. It's so possible. The Bible says this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears with us. Child of God, God has your attention. So there is a way you can't pray. There is a way you can't talk. There is a way you can't think about yourself. You're a child of God. You're born of God. You are anointed from on high. There is greatness on you. And those are the things you must acknowledge every day. You refuse to think you're weak. You refuse to think you're a normal being. You refuse to think you're disadvantaged. You're anointed. You're aided by the Holy Spirit. And that's who you are. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, then I, I, I would like to wrap up this, uh, this part of, of, of spiritual food, of, of eating the right food, with maybe two or three scriptures. You remember, uh, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, it says, I call... He says, look at what he says. Uh, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have said before thee life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. He says, choose life. Choose life. That you and your seed may live. He says, choose life. Connect to the message that communicates life. Connect. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it in abundance. He didn't come that you may break demons. He, he didn't come that you may, you may be strangled by evil spirit. He said, I came that they may have life and have it in abundance. Child of God, choose life. Choose life. Oh, the Bible says, in this is love made manifest. In this is the love of God made manifest. That God sent his son into the world, that we may live through him. That's powerful. That God sent his son into the world, that we may live through him. Hallelujah. That we may live through him. God sent his son into the world, that we may live through him. That's the message you have to connect to. It says we know that we have passed from death to life. That's the message you should connect to. He says we have been translated from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. That's the message you, can, you should connect to. He says you are partakers of the divine nature. He says you are a chosen generation, a right priest to the people of his own. That you should for, show for the praises of him that called you out of darkness into his mother's life. That's the message. He says, having, uh, having, made us, uh, having made known unto us the mystery of this way. I don't walk in confusion. 
The Bible says they have made us made to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. What's the inheritance of the saints? But the Bible says, I have a portion of that inheritance. He says, look at how the message is important. He says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. He says, the message of his grace is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. He says, the message of his grace is able to build you up. Paul is not sure about many things, but he's sure that the message of his grace is able to build you up. You connect to that message, child of God, and you refuse any message that does not point in that direction, because that's now the message for your growth. Oh, hallelujah. That's now the message for your growth. Choose life in all your passions. Choose life in all your thoughts. Choose life in everything that you entertain in your mind, in your spirit. Choose life. As information comes to you, disregard it and say, I belong to life. Uh, I, I love this verse. The Bible says in John, he says that many miracles did Jesus that are not recorded in this book. But he says, these ones are recorded that you may believe on the Son of God that you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah, and that believing you may receive life in his name. Look at that. Look at that. And that believing you may receive life in his name. John chapter 21. Uh, let me start with verse 30. He says, And many other signs truly to Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that ye may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might receive life in his name, through his name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That believing, you see, Jesus came that you might receive life. So now God is telling you in the truth, I want you to choose life. That's why I sent my son. Don't choose curses. Don't choose demons. Don't choose disease. Choose life. Hallelujah. Don't occupy yourself with uh, big doctors information uh, concerning how you should eat. Don't occupy yourself with uh, with with uh, 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 food saying. Uh, don't occupy yourself with uh, you know the Bible calls them endless genealogies that minister questions rather than godly edification. Guard your heart. I want to read your verse when I when you're wondering now who should I listen to? How should I listen? To? Uh, uh, because if I'm to feed, how should I know? Let me open to you that. Titus chapter 1 in the Amplified Version. Titus chapter 1, the Bible says in the Amplified Version, Child of God, I hope you're following. The Bible says, this scripture helps us understand and know who is a servant of God, who is a minister of God. And this lets us know the ministers we ought to listen to. And the message we ought to listen to. Uh, Titus chapter 1 verse 1, a different version. The Bible says, Paul, a born servant of God and an apostle, a special messenger of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. If you are a special minister of God, if you are a set of God, your job is, number one, to stimulate and promote the faith of God's chosen ones. That's responsibility number one. You stimulate and promote the faith of God's chosen ones. So, in other words, don't listen to a message. Don't feast on a message that does not stimulate and promote your faith. This means, after listening to a message, you must be stirred to believe God for big things. You must be stirred to, to face anything you dislike because you think you're bigger than anything. So, the message has to stimulate your faith. It has to promote your faith. But now, number two, he says, and to lead them to accurate discernment and recognition of and accordance with the truth which belongs to harmonizes and tends to godliness. In other words, the true minister of God must do two things to you. He must stir up your faith, but he must also lead you to the understanding, to the acquaintance of the truth that belongs to godliness. Now, godliness is God manifest in the flesh. In other words, a man must stimulate your faith. The message you receive must, must stimulate your faith and it must remind you that you are God in the flesh. 
if a message does not come like that, it's not for your growth. It must remind you that you're God in the flesh and it must stir up your faith. Choose to listen to such things. That's for your promotion. That's for your increase. That's for your growth. If you feast on such things, there is no way you can stay stuck. And you refuse to mix your seat. That's how we tell who to listen to. If a man does not remind me of how one I am with God, of how the nature of God is in me, of how I'm God manifest in the flesh. Because I'm the true mystery of, you know, you know, the Bible, hey, can I even say this? The Bible says that here, this is how we understand the spirit of Antichrist. A spirit that does not confess that God is coming in the flesh. The message that doesn't pay you that you are the manifestation of that mystery. Child of God, that's not your message. That's not your message. A message that doesn't start, that ministers fear and confusion and question, that's not your message. Oh, hallelujah. That's not your message. Praise God. Let me go to another point. The next point I wanted to talk about is spiritual exercise. Remember, I said three things. You have to eat well, you have to exercise, and you have to keep the right company. Now, I've been speaking about eating well. Eating well. So, receive the right word for your nourishment. Receive the word that starts your faith. Receive the word that reminds you that you are a child of God, that you have the God seed inside you. But now, that's not all. Just because you feed the child well, just because uh, uh, you give them all the nutrients they need, just because their bodies are well nourished, that's not the only thing that guarantees growth. There has got to be another part, and that is exercise. This is why babies are put down to crawl. This is why babies are allowed to exercise their legs and pull things and touch things, exercise their hands and so and so forth. So ah, we go to the next part. Even you, as a child of God, you need to exercise. The Bible says in First uh, First Timothy chapter four, verse eight, He says, uh, "For bodily exercise profit of a little." Hmm, that's deep. Ah. <laughs> Child of God, you ought to understand that it's expedient and very important for you to do bodily exercise. The Bible says you profit at a little, and you need that little profiting also. So always make sure you do some running, you sweat a little bit, you you put some pressure on your bones and so on and so forth, but doing some pressure press ups and so on and so forth. But uh, he says that has a little profiting. So you need that little profiting also. But now. Let me go to my main point. Uh, he says, but godliness is profitable unto all, having a promise of the life that is now and that which is to come. Child of God, you need to spiritually exercise. Paul says, here do I exercise myself to have a conscious void of offense before God and man. You have to exercise yourself. You have to exercise yourself. Jesus said something very deep. Jesus said, uh, in John chapter 13, verse 17, he said, if you know this thing, now you see, when the message comes to you, it brings knowledge. When that message brings knowledge, awareness, the Bible says in John 13, 17, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Happy are ye if you do them. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. So you don't stop on no, but you go ahead to do because we are doers of the word. That's what the Bible says. We are doers of the word. We are doers of the word. We are doers of the word. We have to do the word. That spiritual exercise right there. We have to do the word. We have to do the word. You don't just have to. Uh, find out you're a child of God, you have all this inheritance, and just say, wow, excited, praise God. <laughs> no, now you have to start to exercise your prosperity. If the Bible speaks about divine health, exercise your divine health. If the Bible speaks about the anointing, exercise, in, exercise yourself in the anointing. You start to do exercise. You start to exercise yourself. 
The Bible says, listen to this powerful verse. The Bible says in Jude verse 20, it says, and you beloved, but you beloved, building that yourselves with your most holy faith. Building that, look at that. He says, building up yourselves in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. In other words, prayer is a spiritual exercise. He says, what does it do for you? It builds you up in your most holy faith. Child of God, there is a growth you're not going to experience in your life until you learn to pray. And let me say this also. Until you pray and, and, and you know that the Lord has touched you and you know that you have seen God in prayer and you know that, you know, oh, what should I say? Like, there is too much I want to say about prayer. My heart bleeds when I look at how uh, inexperienced many of our people who complain about not having fruit are inexperienced in prayer. Child of God, you must learn to tarry in prayer. You must learn to pray. You must learn. You must learn to lock yourself up and speak in tongues. The Bible says when you do that, you're building yourself up in your most holy faith. Remember that what the Bible says in First Corinthians chapter 14. The Bible exhorts us about the purpose of speaking in other tongues. This is why every child of God must speak in other tongues. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, uh, let me start with verse, uh, let me start with verse 1. It says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts in the that you may prophesy. Verse 2 says, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him. But how be it in the spirit, he speaketh mystery. Hallelujah. Then he says, he that, he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification, by uh, exhortation and comfort. And he, for, and he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesies edifies the church. Now, I'm on the point of you edifying yourself. The word here, edify, means a lot of things. It means improve yourself. It means build yourself. In other words, as you speak in other tongues, by the Holy Spirit, the Bible says they speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Because the Holy Spirit is inside you, He gives you utterances. The Bible says we know not how to pray, how we ought to, but the Holy Spirit helps our infirmity. The word infirmity there is limitation. He helps our limitation. This is why we need to pray in other times, because human language is limited. And the Bible says when you speak in other tongues, you edify yourself. Until you pray certain ways, until you develop a certain uh, discipline of prayer, until you develop a certain fervency of prayer, until you learn to tarry in prayer, until you learn that child of God, there is a growth you're not going to experience. Any man who has fruit <coughs> in these things is because they have learned to carry a certain way. You must pray until you know that you have been with God. You must pray until you know God has touched your life. You must pray until you know something. You have crossed over to a certain realm. You must pray. Learn to pray. Learn to pray. Learn to persist in prayer. Learn to hold on in prayer. Many of you are quick. You want to talk to somebody when you're in trouble. You want to ask questions when you It's okay to ask questions. But not all the times men have your answers. Uh, uh, you want to run to men all the time. When are you going to run to God? When are you going to run to God? When are you going to run to God? Who, who will answer every question for you? Who will speak to you all the time? You need God. And prayer is one of the ways you let him know you need him. And he always shows up and starts to raise you up to his realm. Prayer has a lot of influence it brings to your spirit. So, there is an importance there of prayer. Speak in other tongues. When you're at work, when you're driving your car, when, let me tell you, when fear hits you, when confusion hits you, when you receive bad news, when you're rejoicing, when speak in other tongues. It says building up yourself in your most holy faith. He, he has said in 1 Corinthians 14, 4, that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, and defies himself. Some people are so weak spiritually, 
some people, their spirits are so lazy. Yes, they are fat because they are fed well, but they, 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 their spirits are flabby. <laughs> you need to develop some muscle. And how do you develop it? He says, building up your souls in your most holy faith. Speaking of the Holy Ghost. Speaking of the Holy Ghost. So you must learn to exercise yourself. There are many different kinds of exercises of the Spirit. Look at this. Uh, James 1.25, the Bible says, But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continue therein, him being not a forgetful here, but a doer. <clears throat> if any man among you is uh, but to so look at into the perfect law of liberty and continue with there and be he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work. This man, he says, shall be blessed in all his deeds. Praise God, hallelujah. He says, This man shall be blessed in all his deeds. The Bible says, Now, this is a spiritual exercise. You must learn to look into the perfect law of liberty. You must learn to meditate on the things that I asked you to receive in the first part of receiving the right message. Meditation is a spiritual exercise for your growth. Pondering on the word of God is a spiritual exercise for your growth. Pondering on the prophecy God has given you is a spiritual exercise for your growth. It's a spiritual exercise. Speaking these words over and over again. Because you see, he says, but we shall look at him to the perfect law of liberty and continue with the, therein. He being never forgetful here, but a doer of the work. In other words, if you don't want to be a forgetful here, you ought to be a doer of the work. But you see, the word doer here is poetess. And poetess is, is, is someone, you learn to make something out of the work. You learn to speak the word. The Bible says you will be blessed in all your deeds. Now, here's the challenge we have. When they teach about spiritual uh, uh, strength, many people receive the message. They eat the message of spiritual strength. And it brings all its nutrients inside you. But you see, when you don't exercise that message, it only adds fat to your spirit. It doesn't do muscle. What you have to do after you receive that kind of message, start to declare it on your life. In the name of Jesus, I'm strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. In the name of Jesus, my spirit is strengthened. My spirit is fortified. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm strong in spirit. I'm strengthened by the Holy Ghost. I'm firm in the spirit. I cannot be moved. In the name of Jesus, what am I doing? I'm exercising myself with the message, with the nutrient that came from the message of, uh, of, of, of spiritual strength. I hope we are together. So you learn to exercise yourself. You learn to exercise yourself. You learn it. When you do, you start to grow. Let me read for you yeah, in Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1, I want to start with verse 5. Uh, you need to see this. Second Peter chapter 1, I want to start with verse 5. Look at what the man of God says. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Uh, Paul says, Mm -hmm. Paul says, uh, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. These are all spiritual exercises. He says, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. He says in verse 8, if these things be in you and are bound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in your knowledge of God, or in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he has been that he was pardoned from his own sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things. 
you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is powerful. This is amazing. This is amazing. Spiritual strength builds your character. It builds a certain character that attracts results. The Bible says, let me read it for you again. It says, besides this, give it. So you remember to start by reminding us how we are partakers of the divine nature, how we have escaped the corruption that is in the world through us, and so on and so forth. And then he says, besides this, he says, giving all diligence. In other words, diligence is the spiritual. He says, giving all diligence to your faith, add to your faith, virtue, excellence, be a person of excellence, oh hallelujah, and to your, and to your virtue, he says, add knowledge, and to knowledge, he says, add temperance, to temperance, he says, add patience, to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, he says, if these things be in you, and abound, the word abound here means that they increase. They make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You want to be fruitful? You know, fruitfulness is growth. Your knowledge being fruitful, that means you're growing. And the Bible is telling us here, we must exercise diligence, we must exercise faith, we must exercise virtuousness, we must exercise knowledge, we must exercise temperance, we must exercise patience, we must exercise godliness, we must exercise brotherly kindness, we must exercise brotherly charity, we must exercise all this. And the Bible says, we become fruitful in our knowledge. And it says, if you don't exercise these things, you are blind and you cannot see that you are patched, and you have forgotten that you are patched from your old sin. And he says, if you do this thing, you will never fall. He says, you will never fall. He says, that interest shall be ministered unto it. In other words, as I exercise patience, as I exercise love, because I love people, because I'm born of love. God is love, and God is my father. I'm born of love, and as I exercise love, what happens? He says, an interest shall be ministered unto it. So, tell the book, exercise your spirit. After you receive the message, don't just say, yay, ha, 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 ha. Celebrate the message. But after celebrating it, go to the place of understanding the responsibility of that message in your life. What is required of you now that you know? Jesus said, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. In other words, it does not stop with knowledge. It goes on to the responsibility of doing the word that I know, doing the word, exercising the message that has come to me. Exercise yourself. Exercise yourself. Receive. He says, be doers of the word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, spiritual exercise is very, very important. Don't just complain and not grow. Exercise, exercise all glory to God. Exercise. Every day. Exercise. Look at what Paul says. He tells Timothy, uh, second Timothy chapter 2, verse 14, I think. Let me read that verse. Uh, let me actually start with uh, verse 14, and I will read up to the end of this chapter. The Bible says, but, thou, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. You see? Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. The Bible says, Paul is telling his spiritual son, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Anybody that wants to grow continues in what they have learned. Anybody that wants to grow, if you want to grow, continue in what's taught you. That's what the Bible is saying here. Because you see, let me teach you something you should never forget. When God wants to promote you, he sends a messenger. When he sends a messenger, that messenger has a message for you. When you receive that message, that's where the secret of your promotion is. Now, 
you don't receive it so that you be excited. You receive it so that you know what you ought to do, so that you know how you ought to respond, so that you know how you ought to deal with it. The Bible says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing from whom thou hast learned. When a message comes to you, receive it. Don't only receive it, continue in the same message. There is no way you can receive a message about prosperity and you continue entertaining beggarly attitudes and continue entertaining uh, 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 poverty mindset. There is no way you're going to receive a message about strength and you continue entertaining weakness and you continue talking weakness and you continue uh, surrounding yourself around weak jars and so on and so forth. You're, you're avoiding, you, you're hindering your growth there. These are things that hinder growth. When you receive a message, continuing in it is an exercise of the spirit. And Paul says, continue in what thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing from whom you learn. And he says, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And all Scripture is profitable, is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So you see, when you receive the word of God, you celebrate it. But you see, you continue in it. Understand the purpose of it. It has come to give you sound doctrine. It has come to reprove you. It has come to correct you. It has come to instruct you in righteousness. Yield to that instruction. Yield to that correction. Yield to that reproof. Yield to that doctrine. That is how you grow. That is how you grow. You don't contradict the thing you feed on. In your talk, in your, in your way of life, in how you live your life, you don't live according to the message you're saying. You will grow. Praise God. Yeah, you know, uh, just imagine somebody wants to grow and then uh, maybe uh, they want to grow financially and then the Lord brings them a message about giving because that's the only way to grow financially. So he brings them a message about giving, the understanding of giving. It brings them a message about the mindset and how they ought to think if they are to grow financially. And then after listening to that message, they still continue in the rebellion. They are stepping their growth. They are not going to grow because when the Word of God comes to you, it gives you a responsibility. And the responsibility is to continue in what you've been taught. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the Bible says that one will give you doctrine, it will correct you, but the end of it is that you will be perfect. And tell the Son is done to all good works. This is maturity. This is maturity. The word perfect here also means fresh. You will be fresh. You will be new. You will be ready for every good work. That is growth. But it must follow the pattern. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I really hope we are following. And uh, this is really doing us so good. So, I say, firstly, feed well. You see the right message. You see the message that starts your faith and reminds you of the good nature that is inside you. Then, the second thing has been spiritual exercise. Paul is telling us continue in the things we've learned. He says building up ourselves in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We must learn to exercise our faith with purpose. With we must learn the character of the Spirit. We grow fast when we exercise success. Now the last thing I want to talk about in this session is uh, uh, one of our major ways of learning is by imitation. And uh, you remember how Paul says, imitate me, then I imitate Christ. 
that's one of the ways we observe and imitate. That's why Porter was too much of, you have known my way of life. You have known my way of life. So he says, uh, look, I love this verse. He says to the Philippian church uh, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. Let me read it for you. He says in Philippians 4, verse 9, he says, Those things which ye have both learned and received and had and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. You see? So we, 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 we can learn, we can receive by observation, we can hear, and we can see by observation. And then the Bible says, the God of peace shall be with us. So it says, when we do the things we see, when we do the things with that, the God of peace shall be with us now. The next part I want to share about is, is have the right company. Many people don't realize that some of the reasons as to why they may have not been growing is they are not deliberate when it comes to who they associate with. Child of God, I want to tell you, your associations have something to do with your growth sometimes. They will always affect or empower you. You know, you remember in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, the Bible says that we should not give up assembly as the manner of some is. The manner of coming together, you know, ah, let me read it. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another in so much the more as the day is approaching. You see, he says we should, we should not forsake assembly. You see, well now, when he's talking about assembly, he's talking about of, of ourselves together. This is the company of the brethren. This is the company of the brethren. They say, we should come together as the company of the brethren. What will it help us? We shall exhort one another. Hallelujah. We shall exhort one another. The Bible in Colossians, it also speaks of that thing where we, 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 we are... Uh, he says, let the word of Christ dwell in me richly, in all wisdom. Uh, he says, let the word of Christ dwell in you, in, in, dwell in you richly, in all wisdom. Then he says, listen to this, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, you see. Now, uh, when you read this, uh, there the, 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 is a similarity between this and the portion of scripture in Ephesians, but you see this one is talking about one another. One another. He says, when the word of Christ was in the in all wisdom, we start to teach and admonish one another in sons and hymns. When we come together, when you keep the right covenant, first of all, if the Bible says, how good it is for the brethren to dwell together in heaven. Uh, the Bible says it is like the anointing flowing from the beard of Aaron unto the garment. Now, Aaron is a Moses is a representation of the law. Aaron is a representation of the grace. The beard is authority. He says when the brethren come together in harmony, the authority of grace starts to flow. In other words, grace is shared. Grace comes to you when you dwell among the brethren of the same grace. There is power in association. There is power in association. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Let me open there for you. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. The Bible says that he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Hear that. Listen to that. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be distressed. In other words, even if a man is wise and he chooses a company of fools, the Bible says the companion, but a companion of fools shall be distressed. Even when you're wise and you make yourself a companion of fools, the Bible says you shall be distressed. You don't need to do what they are doing. You just need to keep company with them. There is a principle that already works against you. But the Bible says, He that walks with the wise shall be wise. Child of God, be a little smarter when it comes to who you hang out with, when it comes to your associations, when it comes to your company, 
what do you talk about when you come together? What do you discuss when you come together? Choose the people with whom you're edified when you come together. Some of you, 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 you sit with people. Say, for example, let me give you an example. There are people who are fearless. The Bible speaks about them in Jude. Let me, let me read for you a certain verse. In Jude. Um, the Bible says in Jude, mm -hmm. uh, the Bible speaks about a certain kind of people in Jude. Um, let me get it here. This Paul, such a good man. Uh, he speaks about uh, in verse 10. He says, But these speak evil of things which they know not, but what they know naturally as good beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished. In the game thing of core. These are spots, these spots in your fists of charity. When they fist, uh, the Bible continues, he speaks about how they despise government. They speak evil of things they know not. You cannot be friends with people who speak evil of things they know not. Somebody doesn't understand that grace message. And all they do is trash every great preacher. And those are your best friends. Those are the ones you hang out with, the hinder and your growth. All the time they are there. They are discussing. The Bible says they despise government. They despise government. In other words, they don't own authorities. Never, let me say this clearly. Never hang out with somebody who does not fear spiritual authority? Never. Because they will corrupt you. They will destroy you. Never. Never hang out with somebody who can really speak evil about a minister of the gospel who they didn't send, who does not serve them, who does not work in their name. A minister you didn't send, you don't have the power to judge. See what I mean? You don't have the power to judge. Praise the Lord. But for, uh, there are people who are fearless. They speak evil about ministers of the gospel. They speak evil about everything they know not. The, the Bible says in Second Peter chapter two, he says verse ten again. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government's presumptions, they are self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. Never hang out with such people. If somebody starts to have a corruption in their spirit that not only disregards spiritual authority, but goes ahead and speaks evil of dignity, those people, if just a matter of time, they will destroy you. You become stagnant when you hang out with such people because in their own folly, they are fools. Um, I want to remind you of a story uh, of uh, the young prophet and the old prophet. Some of you have read about it. It is in the book of First Kings, chapter 13. Uh, there, there was a young prophet and an old prophet. The Bible says that the young prophet was sent, and when he was sent, he was told not to eat or drink not to get up the way, divert anyway. And uh, the Bible says that when the old prophet heard that the young prophet was coming, he found him somewhere and he told him that, hey, bro, I'm, I'm also a prophet. Come on. Come, I'm also a prophet. Come in my house and we eat. And then the young prophet told him, no, 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 no. I was told not to eat and drink in any place. And the old prophet told him, hey, come on, I'm also a prophet. Come on. In other words, it's okay, it's okay to disobey instruction. You don't take instruction, it's so important. 
and also profit. Some people like that. They encourage rebellion, claiming they are also servants of God. Hey, come on, don't do that. I'm also a man of God. Hey, come on, don't do that. I'm also a woman of God. And so the old prophet persuades the young prophet, and the young prophet goes into his house and he drinks and he eats. And uh, the Bible says, after he went his way, and the Bible says that when he went his way, the Bible says that when he went his way, he found a lion. He found a lion. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him as his carcass was cast in the way and the earth stood by it and the lion also stood by the carcass. Listen to this. The young man didn't have to die. At this time, he didn't have to be aborted. But the young man didn't know who to work with and who not to work with. After the young man received an instruction that this is how things are done, Somebody older comes in and tells them, no, 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 I'm also a prophet. I'm also a man of God. Don't do what was told you. Watch your company, child of God. If it is fasting period, an instruction has come into fasting. Refuse to think that there is somebody about that instruction. Don't hang out to be big with people who think they are above certain instructions. Don't argue with them, don't help them, but don't give them your time, don't give them your audience, you will get stuck. If you are to grow, you must watch your company, you must watch your association. What are the things that put you together? Is it the word of God? Do you need to edify each other or you need to gossip and discuss other people? Do you need to edify each other or you need to talk about nonsense? Never hang around people who don't fear. You know, Paul, Paul was very scary. You know, look at what he said in First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. And let me read for you verse 9 to verse 11. Paul said something there <laughs> that many Christians may even wonder where the grace of God is in this matter. Paul said, <laughs> I wrote unto you in an epistle not to happen with fornicators. Now, fornicators here, uh, uh, it may be, it may be fornication, yes, yeah? and it may be any other error. But you see, here the, the major point when you read from us, the major point is people. He is not asking us to keep away from the weak, but he's asking us to keep away from people who take pleasure in the things that are ungodly. There is a difference if somebody is struggling with a weakness. That's different. But if somebody has pleasure in a weakness, that's another thing. He says, yet, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world. Uh -huh. Now, you see, not with the fornicators of this world. He says, the fornicators of this world need us. We have to preach to them. Or the covetous, or the exceptionals, or the idolaters, for they must, for then Matthew needs to go out of the world. But I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, a covetous, an idolater, a railer, or a drunkard, or an extensioner, with such a one, no, not to eat. Paul is not asking us to keep away from the weak, but he's asking us to keep away from people who take pleasure in being weak. There are people who take pleasure in being weak. And Paul is asking that we should keep away from them. If somebody has a problem, it's okay. If they acknowledge that they need help. But there are people you don't need to have company with. Because they will corrupt you. Be smart with how you choose your friendship, with how you choose your relationship. Let it be divine. Let it be purpose. Let it be responsibility. Let it be what God is doing in your life. Let the things that bring you people together be godly virtues. Let, that will help you. We are all our brothers keepers. But you see, you must understand that if you're to, to be in safe hands, agree on certain things. Agree on certain minds. Agree on certain understandings. 
if it's not like that, many of the things will be confidential. Remember, the Bible says in First uh, Corinthians uh, fifteen thirty three that <clears throat> he says, uh, "Be not deceived; evil communications corrupt good manners." Now, the word communication here is also fellowship, communion. You see, the Bible says it corrupts good manners. It corrupts good manners. Child of God, know from whom you learn. Know and, and say, be mature enough to know that with where I'm going, with what I'm learning, there are friends that are not important, that are, that are necessary to throw away if I'm serious about my destiny. If I'm serious about where I'm going, there are associations I don't need. You see? Be among men of the same faith. Associate with men that are ahead of you, men that are taking you to where you want to go, men that can add something to you, men that inspire you, men that, you know, I usually tell people, it is very, very, very important to always have godly friendships, godly association. It is very, very important. But uh, sometimes we are always caught up. We are always with people. We are always arguing. We are always. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Bible says in in uh, in uh, first second Timothy chapter two, verse two, chapter two, verse twenty two. He says, "Flee also lustful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the name of the Lord." out of a pure heart. You see? He says, flee these bad things, but follow after these things with them that call upon the name of the Lord with a pure heart. And listen to what he says, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they gender strife. You see? Foolish and unlearned questions avoid Knowing the agenda and to strike. The agenda to strike. So he says, flee lustful lust. But, youthful lust. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. With them, with them that call on the Lord with a pure heart. With them that call on the Lord with a pure heart. Don't follow love. <laughs> We, we should love everybody, but association is something else. Allowing people into your space is something else. Giving people your time. There are people who are known to work your time. And if you're serious and you're to grow, some people have to be let go. Hallelujah. I want to bring this teaching to a close. But uh, these have been the three things I thought I should share to help you weigh yourself and see uh, where you've been wanting and activate them. There are many other principles. There are many things we can teach inside these three things, but I, I felt like we need to really discuss this as a way of growth because we've had a challenge of many people who violate these principles of growth and still wonder why they're not growing. So please, uh, uh, eat the right food, receive the right message, exercise yourself spiritually, and keep the right company. These three things are some of the most important elements of growth. And if you exercise them, you will start to see fruit. You will start to see advancement. You will, step by step, you will, you will tell you're going somewhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'd like to thank you for listening to me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much. I'm sure this is still continuing. Uh, the glory of God is here. The power of God is here. I would like to pray with you some little, then I will, I will let the program continue. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise and I thank you for what you're doing in our day. Thank you, Lord, for the word you've given us today. 
Holy Spirit, I give you praise that you're helping somebody grow. In the name of Jesus, you're teaching them how to discern the right message. You're teaching them how to exercise themselves spiritually. You're teaching them how to choose the right company. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. None of them shall be like the young prophet who was strayed by the old prophet. Lord, I give you praise that you're teaching us out of your word. You're maturing us out of your word. So that we'll be useful in our generation. So that we'll be useful in our dispensation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm asking you, mature somebody. Let somebody trust their, track their lives and see that there is surely a growth. There is surely an interest. There is surely a multiplication. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I give you praise for what you're doing in our lives. For how you're building our lives. For how you're building our hearts. In the name of Jesus. For how you're enlarging our ministry. In the name of Jesus. For how you're increasing our influence. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you praise that you can speak more than I have spoken. You will edify more than I have edified. You will bring to remembrance everything we have shared. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you praise that men and women are being built. Men and women are being increased. In the mighty name of Jesus. They are stronger than ever before. They are mightier than ever before. You are working in them more and more every day. To the glory of your name. I give you praise and I thank you. They that you call for my responsibilities to this generation. You are growing them. You are quickening them. You're calling them out in the name of Jesus. You're placing a sense of urgency in their spirits to respond to you quicker because of the short time we have on this earth. Lord, I give you praise and I thank you. You're working that which is pleasing in your sight, in our life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed and believed. Amen and amen.